Welcome to the Evidence-Based Marketer, a podcast focused on the science of marketing with a special emphasis on financial services. Whether you're looking to grow your business or provide a better client experience, we focus on how you can use data and research and time-tested strategies to be a more effective marketer. Welcome to the Evidence-Based Marketer. I'm William Chettle, Director of Experience Engagement here at Symmetry Partners. I'm Andrea Loin, Digital Marketing Specialist here as well. And today we are going to cover part two of our special <laughs> series on the five senses and how you can use them in marketing. Previously, we covered taste, and now we're going to move on to smell. <laughs> it's one of my favorites because it's the most interesting one. Um, like taste, it's a chemical sense, and we're going to start with the science here and then evolve into how you can actually use this in your marketing. Um, our sense of smell is not necessarily as fine-tuned as some mammals we know. Uh, you know, we don't tend to have, uh, you know, Drug sniffing humans no. <laughs> we have to rely on dogs to do that. Uh, but more than three percent of our genome is actually dedicated solely to smell. We have the ability to detect a, more than a trillion distinct aromas. So you, you know we're not we're not doing too too badly. So the science is still evolving, but in broad terms, we first begin to perceive a smell when airborne molecules stimulate receptors or sensory cells in the nose. Uh, and if a substance is somewhat volatile, that is, it easily turns into a gas, it's organic, it will give off molecules or odorants. Non-volatile materials, think of steel, don't tend to have a particular smell. Temperature and humidity also affect odor. This is why garbage smells really <laughs> bad on a hot, humid day. Um, and, and next what happens is the sensory cells in the nose pass on electrical impulses to the brain, which in turn interprets these patterns of these impulses and then perceives them as being specific odors. But what I find really interesting is that smell, more than any other sense, is intimately linked to parts of the brain that, that process emotion and learning. Uh, the olfactory bulb, um, which is really at the heart of the brain uh, and processes scent perception, is part of the limbic system. And this is a system that includes the amygdala, the hippocampus, parts of the brain that are integral to our mood, behavior, and most importantly, our memories. So this means that the, basically the sense of smell is right next to the emotional processing part of the brain. And this is why smells, and I think most of us have experienced this in our life, can often be some of the most emotional of, of our sense memories. That you can smell something and it'll take you right back. It might be a smell that reminds you of your childhood. Mm -hmm. It might be a smell that reminds you of you know someone you used to love. It might be a, a, a smell of... <laughs> Something you didn't like so much, <laughs> and it takes you right back. And your smells can trigger those emotions, and it's a very vivid response. It's not just, you know, oh, it's a fleeting memory. It takes you back you know, to your emotions at that point in time. And Now, a lot of this is very, very, you know, individual. So, you know, I might have fun memories of uh, summer camp and the piney smell that was there, Somebody else may have hated summer camp and they, you know, for them, the smell of pine just, you know, triggers all those bad memories of, of summer camp. So it is uh, very subjective, but there are probably some commonalities. Most of us like the smell of fresh baked bread. Most of us like the smell of cookies, oh, yes. baking. <laughs> Bacon. And, and, the, <laughs> and this is why realtors are, are notorious for this. Uh, when they're open, hold, holding an open house, they'll often bake bread, bake cookies, mm -hmm. so that the whole house is filled with that, that delicious smell and it's triggering all those memories of home and childhood and, you know, mom and all those good things. That, and they really hope that will cause you yeah. to buy. <laughs> Make you feel cozy and at home. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've, one of the things I thought was interesting, so Oscar Mayer bacon. I, I'm a big bacon fan. My sons wake up to bacon on the weekends and love it. Um, Oscar Mayer came out with a dongle for your phone that when your alarm went off, it actually emitted the scent of Oscar Mayer bacon out of just a little poof. And... There you go. When you wake up, you want bacon. So you're waking to bacon. You're waking to <laughs> you're bacon. You're waking to bacon. And if you don't have it, you're going to go buy it. If not, by the next weekend, you have another one. Mm -hmm. So the the it was actually brilliant to associate the wake up with bacon. And now that every time you start to wake up, even without it, you're going to associate the bacon smell. And this we talked in the last episode about Hotel DoubleTree, which serves fresh baked mm -hmm. cookies to to people when they check in. Well. A lot of the attraction there is, I mean, they, yes, they taste great, but what they're really playing on is the sense of, of smell and the fact that you'll associate uh, that smell of, of, of baking with home and you'll think of Doubletree as being like your home away from home. That's what they're really trying to, to do there. Well, it's funny, Rolls-Royce, um, you know, it's a, it's a very prestigious car brand, but every time you take 
your Rolls Royce in to be serviced at their garage. They actually spray it with the scents that they spray their new cars with so that when the owner gets into the car, it, it evokes that emotion of when they first purchased it and they fall in love with it again. They A lot of people like that new car smell, but they're going the extra step of bringing it back into the car every time it gets serviced at a garage. Yeah, and it's probably a, a uniquely Rolls Royce smell. It is. It is, yes. <laughs> but stores have distinct smells. There's certain stores if you go into, they've actually got a signature signature fragrance. Hotels have done this. I used to stay at a hotel out in San Jose called the Valencia Hotel. Uh, this used to be the center of, uh, you know, oranges, um, orange picking in, 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 in California. And so they had a light citrus scent that, that permeated the mm-hmm. entire hotel. It was very pleasant, but also distinctive. Whenever you smelled it, you would always think of the Valencia Hotel. Well, it's, and it's funny because you can go too far the other way too, right? Because scent can evoke a very strong physical and mental reaction. If you go too far the other direction with the scent, um, it could, you know, be a negative thing. Uh, Abercrombie and Fitch has recently stopped with the very potent uh, cologne and and you know tough smells as you walk in and they're going more for the citrus, more for the light and airy. And they, you know, back to the sound, you know, that we'll talk about later. They've also turned on the music because they were finding that people were, you know, almost having traumatic experiences walking in. So they, for my generation, it was new, it was different. And then as people grew up, they're realizing, okay, we need this light, airy scent. No more of this harsh in your face scent. And they've made the change. Some some businesses don't make the changes, and that's not a, a positive thing either. And there's various sort of schools of thought on the psychology of smells and what they mean. And mm-hmm. is this a relaxing smell? Is this an exciting smell? Is this a smell that causes you to buy? And I think the science is still a little little squishy on this. Um, but I have even seen hotels where they offer little bottles of lavender. Mm-hmm. Because lavender is supposed to relax you, and the idea is that you sniff that, you put on your robe, and you feel all nice and relaxed and, <laughs> and ha- have a good night at the hotel. Yep. Uh, one of the things that a number of products have done to, to stand out is add smell, and this is called scentvertising. And you'd be amazed at some of the things that have had, had scents added to them. So it makes sense, you know, if you've got shampoo, if you've got soap, <laughs> that should probably have a, a, a certain smell to it. But they've added a sense to, to things as from razor blades, and that you can still get those. There have been scented flash drives. There have been <laughs> scented laptops and, and scented phones. And, and again, a lot of these things are failures. But what they're trying to do is, again, create that, that emotional connection through smell with a particular brand and do something that is differentiated. It goes back to that old scratch and sniff, right? Those, those yep. stickers, scratch and smell uh-huh. and evoke an emotion. <laughs> And I think this is obviously not going to apply to, to you know, a lot of professionals, but I know financial advisors and even CPAs who would light scented candles when, mm-hmm. when clients came in. And it would usually be something light, often citrusy. They might shake it up a little bit at holiday time and do a pumpkin spice in, right. in, in the fall. But the idea was to create a, a pleasant aroma that pervaded the, the, the space without being overwhelming, but it just felt like something that was warm, welcoming, and a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and again, when they smell that, it, let's say it's a, a scented candle. When Every time they smell that, they're going to come back to your office and the, the positive experience that they had there, and and maybe they're with their friends <laughs> again. But they, you, know, you want to make sure that all of their senses are pleased when they're coming into your, your office, into your, you know, even your home, if you're, you're, you know, meeting with them at home, because it makes a difference, you know, it's going to calm people, they've had a really stressful day at work, and and you don't know that. Um, And they come in, and they're on edge, and you want to take that edge away, go for one of the the easiest things you can do is their their sense of smell. Yeah, I think it would be interesting as a professional, you know, depending on who you're working with, maybe for certain reports, etc, you used a light lavender scent on the paper. Yeah, could be very interesting. Again, it has to be the right business. It would have to be the the right clients, but a great way to to, to stand out. On the negative side, you also don't want to. Andrea talked about about not having aggressive sense. You just also want your office environment to, if you're not using pleasant sense, not to have unpleasant sense. I used to work in an office where almost every day one of the staff there would bring in Brussels sprouts and microwave them. 
and microwave <laughs> microwave Brussels sprouts. I, I love Brussels sprouts, but microwave Brussels sprouts are not a good smell. You know, it smelled like some small animal had died in a vent. And <laughs> this was every day, and clients came in, and you could tell that they did not like the like the smell of the uh, of the the Brussels sprout. So it's something to be to, to be mindful of. And you also want to be where's your office located? You know, if you're located next to a bakery, phenomenal. But you don't necessarily want to be located next to flower shops, dry cleaners. Salons, grocery stores, you know, anything that might have a, a distinct and unpleasant aroma. Well, and think, I mean, we have a town here in Connecticut that's a beautiful town, but it is downwind from a paper mill. And so Terrible smell. you can't sit outside when it's a windy day or a hot summer day without get, catching a whiff of that. And that's not something you control. But when you are looking for your place of business, look at what's around you because that's the stuff that can, you know, cause issues. <laughs> And the last thing is, you know, your personal scent. You know, if you use cologne, if you use perfume, just be <laughs> mindful of, 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 of others. It's okay for professionals to have a sort of light signature scent, but you don't want to overdo it. A lot of people do have scent allergies. And, you know, you don't want to be known as the person who, who smells like uh, high karate. Uh, <laughs> Or some other, uh, you know, rather strong, ill, ill-fated cologne or, or, or perfume. So just be mindful of that, and brush your teeth. And oh yes, <laughs> oh, and it's it's funny that um, you know, having had two children, pregnant women do have almost the drug sniffing dog nose, right? So be mindful of where people are in there. So, you know, if you do have a client that is you know expecting, don't put on your strongest cologne because it may deter them all the way, especially in an introduction meeting. But with, with smell, uh, as with taste, I think there are opportunities not just to be mindful of negative impressions, but to actually make positive impressions for yourself. And if you are a professional, do think about having those baked cookies for client mm-hmm. meetings. Do think about maybe having a, a signature scent for the office, if, if it makes sense, depending on who you're serving. But just think it through. And it's one more opportunity to differentiate yourself that a lot of marketers are not focused in on. And I think in many cases, especially for many businesses, they're missing opportunities. Yeah, and it's an easy it's an easy way to market. If you really think about your clients, you're going to know them anyway. So find a way to get in front of you know these two senses. If you bake cookies, you know, you're hitting two of the five senses just right there. So... Put a little thought into it, and it's going to make your whole client experience that much better. Next time, we're going to cover touch. (laughs) We're making it, it will be crossing the halfway point of the five senses. That's right, right in the middle. And if you have any questions or you want to find out more about us, just go to theevidencebasedmarketer.com. Until then, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. Symmetry Partners LLC is an investment advisory firm registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. The firm only transacts business in states where it is properly registered, excluded, or exempted from registration requirements. Registration of an investment advisor does not imply any specific level of skill or training and does not constitute an endorsement of the firm by the commission. No one should assume that future performance of any specific investment, investment strategy, product, or non-investment related content made reference to directly or indirectly in this material will be profitable. As with any investment strategy, there is the possibility of profitability as well as loss. Due to various factors, including changing market conditions and or applicable laws, the content may not be reflective of current opinions or positions. Please note the material is provided for educational and background use only. Moreover, you should not assume that any discussion or information contained in this material serves as the receipt of or as a substitute for personalized investment advice. Please note that nothing either stated or implied on this podcast is intended to be compliance or legal advice regarding your marketing program.